Hello everyone, this is Amanda with the LiveCoin Q&A. We're going to look at three more viewer submissions today, and we're going to go ahead and get started. This first one is from James G, and he says, I have what might be a repunched mint mark on this nickel. Is that correct, or is this some kind of post-mint damage? Thanks. So the nickel that James submitted is a 1994D Jefferson nickel. And since the question is about a possible repunched mint mark, I'm going to try to explain why it's not actually possible for this coin to have a repunched mint mark. So from the early 1800s all the way to 1989, the U.S. Mint was hand punching mint marks into the working dies that they used to strike coins. One of the U.S. Mint die makers would take one of the thin steel mint mark punches and they would hold it in place on the desired area of the working die and then they would whack the mint mark punch with a mallet in order to leave an impression of the mint mark on the die. Most of the time when they were doing this, they would have to hit this punch more than one time to make sure they left a decent impression. Sometimes in the process of doing this, since they're whacking it multiple times, sometimes the punch would move slightly between hits. And this could result in doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling on the mint mark. Here is the up close photo of the mint mark on this nickel. So while you're looking at that, I'm going to finish explaining why this can't be a repunched mint mark. The last year that you'll actually find repunched mint marks on US minted coins is 1989. From then on, the mint marks were placed on the master dies instead of being hand punched into the working dies. So since they did that switch, a repunched mint mark is no longer possible on our more modern coins. And looking at this photo of the mint mark, it looks like the mint mark has actually taken a hit on the left side where I've got that arrow pointing. And I'm also seeing some slight dye deterioration. Our next viewer submission is from Michael B. And he says, I got this nickel back in change about six months ago, looking for advice on the steps needed to have it authenticated. What are your thoughts on it? I'm looking forward to hearing back from you on this coin, mostly because I believe in what you say. I've listened and watched many YouTube channels and by far, you are the cream of the crop, brother. And since that was thrown in at the end there, I am assuming that this email was supposed to go to Sean. But I'm answering it anyway, but I can't kind of agree with you. Sean does have a pretty good YouTube channel. I do watch it every once in a while. So let's see what's going on with this coin. The coin that Michael submitted is this 1964 Jefferson Nickel. And I'm assuming that the area he wanted us to look at is the big metal blobs that are on the reverse of the coin. While these do kind of have the appearance of a die break, these are actually something that happened after the coin was minted. And I'm going to try my best to explain why I can tell that. So first off, if this was an actual die break, it would be a pretty catastrophically large one. And you would expect to see a weakness on the opposite side of the coin where you're seeing these large accumulations of metal that kind of look like a cud or a die break. But when you look on the obverse of this coin, you're not seeing any of that weakness. And that weakness would be a result of some of that metal shifting to fill in the area where the die break happened. And since this coin does not have that weakness, 
it would tell me that this metal has been added to the coin after it left the mint. Probably some kind of solder or melted metal. And this isn't an actual minting error. All right, we're down to the last viewer submission. This one is from Eddie R. He says, hi, this is Eddie back in Chicago. I was wondering about this error and what the proper verbiage for it is. Thanks a bunch. The coin that Eddie submitted is this 1988 Lincoln Memorial cent. And I'm assuming the possible error that he's referring to is the ring that you can see near the rim. This ring goes through the middle of In God We Trust and I've got some yellow arrows pointing to it. This ring is actually a form of design devouring dyeware that is called ridge ring. And this is extremely common to see on copper plated zinc Lincoln scents. As most of us know, the US Mint tries to get as much use out of each dye as possible which means many of the dyes end up being severely worn out before being retired. Ridge rings, like the one you see on this coin, are thought to be the result of a circular depression that is formed on the die from being used to constantly strike coins. While these ridge rings are kind of interesting looking, there isn't much interest in these and it is just a common form of dye deterioration which doesn't add any kind of extra value to the coins. That was all I had prepared for this video, but as always, if you have a question about a coin or paper currency, we would love to help. Send your question and your clear photos to info at livecoinqa.com and thank you for watching.